Jesus There's no one like Him There's no one like Jesus There's no one like Him To those that are intimate with Him When they say His name They're thinking of a person one with presence of reality of a real relationship with a person. Will you receive his person, Job 13 and 8? Not something, but someone. Hallelujah. We're personal. service but I didn't come for a service I come for a savior I'm just in a service because I'm here for a savior many don't come to a service because they forget a savior because he's not that personal to them yet oh they've left the place because they had to leave his person first because when they find this person again they'll wind back up they'll meet him in that place that he's ordained yeah there's no one like him. No, 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 no. There's no one like Jesus. Yeah, there's no one like him. No, no. No one like Jesus. You can pause that for a moment, just momentarily. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In John chapter 18, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth. Somebody say, that's what Jesus does. He goes forward. Amen. Somebody say, if you follow him, that's what you'll do. If you stop following him, it's evident you go backwards. If you're going back to perdition, back to sin, as Hebrews 10, 38 and 39 says, for it is written, the just, some of us say, shall live by faith. This is what living by faith is. It's moving with him. It's following him. He said, the just shall live by faith. But some of us say, if any man draw back, some of us say, that's not living by faith. Living by faith is not drawing back. So it must be moving forward, following forward, following him forward. He said, that draw back. He said, my soul, he says, has no pleasure with them in verse 39. So Hebrews 11 and 6 says, by faith we please him. Somebody say, by faith we please him. So everybody say when people draw back to sin, they draw back to their old ways. Somebody say the Bible calls it backsliding. Somebody say it's the opposite of following him forth. Following him forward. Amen. So everybody say living by faith is following Jesus. Doing the opposite of living by faith is backsliding. It's going back to sin, back to perdition. Somebody say, you can't follow him and backslide. So if a person's backsliding, if they're going back, it's because simply they're not choosing to follow him. Amen. So it said he went forth with his disciples. Somebody say, with his disciples. Hallelujah. Meaning they were following him. They were with him. Over the brook of Kedron, where was a garden? Somebody say Gethsemane. This is where it was. Into which he entered and his disciples. Notice he didn't just enter there. His disciples did. 
Somebody say, that's what makes a disciple. Somebody that's following him forth. They're disciplined, but they're a disciple. They're a follower. But somebody say, they follow him where he goes. In Jesus, it said in verse 2, it said in Judas rather, also which betray him knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. And if you know anything about this place, this garden, Jesus often, some might say often, very predictable, went to this garden for no other reason than to pray in the Mount of Olives. Some ought to say his disciples went with him. Sadly, you find record in Luke 22, they're there right before he's betrayed and they're sleeping. They're slumbering. Judas, who betrayed him, that John 6, 70 said, Jesus said, I've chosen 12 of you and one of you has got a devil. Some ought to say Judas was demon possessed, but yet he was a disciple. He was following the Lord and it said he knew the place. Somebody say he knew the place. But the night he betrayed Jesus, he weren't in that place. He was in the wrong place. He was wanting 30 pieces of silver. In today's economy, roughly, the account would be $197.40. That's all he wanted. Give me just under 200 bucks and I'll give you Jesus. Somebody say, but he knew the place. Everybody say, he knew the place called prayer. He knew what it took. He had been there before. Somebody say he knew the place, but he didn't know the person. There's a lot of people, they know the place. They know where they ought to be. They know where, come on somebody, they should be and what they should be doing. But why don't they do it? Because they don't know the person. Somebody say it's one thing to know the place, but when you know the person, you'll be in place. You'll get in place. You'll show up to the place. Come on, you'll show up to the post. Somebody say, it's one thing to know it. There's not many people in southeast Georgia in the Bible Belt here in the south that you could approach at any given time, wherever you at. Just look on social media. Everybody knows the place. They call it prayer. Pray for me. Pray, 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 pray. Everybody's talking about the place. Pray, pray, pray. And that's what, it's, that's what that is. Prayer is the place. Pray. Amen. Praise God. But when it comes time to actually show up in his house, the house of prayer, Matthew 21, 13, in that place of prayer, some ought to say they're absent. Some ought to say they're aware of the place, but they have no relationship with the person. Some ought to say if you follow Jesus forth, You'll follow him forth through prayer. People backside before they backslide. People become prayerless before they go away and go back to sin and perdition. Amen? Somebody say to backslide requires prayerlessness. You're so busy, you no longer have time to spend time with God. And the reason people have no time to spend time with God at his house of prayer, because they're not doing it at their house. Oh, they're posting on social media, pray for me, but they're not spending time with God. Somebody say, you can spend time with a prayer, but that don't mean you're spending time with God the person. Because most of the request is all about me, what I want God to do for me, and Jesus becomes a genie, so to speak. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Psalms 80 verses 18, David said, so that I'll not go back from you again, because David knew what it meant to miss God and go back. Amen. He said, so that I'll not go back from you again, quicken me. Somebody say that means anoint me. Breathe on me so I might call on your name. David said, I know how to keep from going back, but it's one thing to know about it, but it's another thing to actually do it. He's, in other words, David was saying, anoint me to pray so I don't go back. So I don't backslide. Somebody say all backsliders have one thing in common. They get too busy to pray. They stop praying with God, praying to God. And I like to say praying with God because I'm talking about spending time with God, not just talking to him, telling him what you need. Amen. Praying to or praying with God. Amen. Somebody say either praying with God or playing with God. Amen. And so... They neglect that private time. That's why you see their absence when it's the public time. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen? Praise God. So David said, Lord, quicken me. Let's pray that tonight. Say, Lord, quicken me. Anoint me to call on your name. Somebody say, Lord, anoint me to pray. Zechariah 12 and 10, the Bible said, I'll pour the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication on the inhabitants of the land. Some ought to say the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication. Some ought to say the spirit of grace, 
the one, the Holy Ghost that brought me to faith in Jesus is also the one that anoints me to commune with Jesus. How did you get saved? You prayed. Whoever called on the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. Romans 10, 13. Somebody say, if prayer is that important, it got you in the kingdom. Guess what? It's highly the same important right now after you get saved because that's what's going to keep you in the kingdom. Luke 21, 36, Jesus said, watch and pray always that you may be worthy to escape those things that come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 6 said they have gone back and have not inquired of the Lord. Inquired's just a fancy King James word to mean they have not called on the Lord. They have not took time to pray. Somebody say they went back because they stopped praying up. Somebody say when you no longer have time to pray up, somebody say you're going to go missing. The enemy will take you out. It don't matter what you've seen or even what God has used you to do in the past. Somebody say, there is no substitute for prayer. Amen. I, and y'all have heard this story, but I, I was in another country when this happened many years ago. Amen. And this individual, this preacher personality at that time told me because of the famous connections he had, and I mean famous preacher connections he had, and because they had laid their human palm on his head and anointed and prophesied something to him, he then looked at me and said he didn't need to pray like he used to. He didn't need to study the Bible like he used to. Friend, you'll never graduate from prayer. You'll never graduate from the study of this word. When you do, you're backslid. All you have is memories. You're not making any. You're just reminded of some you used to have. And some people in that moment begin to operate superficially, not supernaturally. They begin to operate out of a shallow state. Come on, somebody. Amen. And what they begin to preach from, prophesy, prophesy, whatever you want to call, and minister and minister from, amen, is not revelation, but it's out of remembrance. Judas. He knew what it took. He knew the place. He knew the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew that's where Jesus went and prayed. He had been there many times. Some ought to say he had become familiar with it. Amen. He knew the place, but some ought to say he still betrayed Jesus. Somebody say he still turned his back on Jesus. He still got demon possessed and he was a disciple at one point. He was a follower. But somebody say along the way he went back right in the presence of God. Right around close proximity to the person of Jesus. Because even the disciples couldn't do what Jesus did when they were walking with him. They couldn't cast demons out. Read it Mark 9. Jesus told him the reason you can't. He said, this kind comes forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. Mark 9, 29. So that meant they were hanging out around Jesus, but they didn't have no prayer life. There's a lot of people like that. They're following God. They're following Christ afar off, but they don't commune with him. They don't fellowship with him. That's why anything the enemy can throw at them or hurl at them can stop them and take them out. And they go missing so quick. Hello? Oh, when they'll, they'll pray at the church when it's altar time or, or they'll come and stand in the altar and wait for somebody to come prophesy to them. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about spending God, time with God, quality time. I'm not talking about quantity. I'm talking about quality time with God. Somebody say every day of your life. Psalms 86 and 3, David said, I'll cry unto you daily. Somebody say daily. Matthew 6 verses 11 says, give us this day. Somebody say our daily bread. Somebody say daily. So this walk with God's a daily walk. But it's not a walk before it's a talk. Because you didn't start walking with God until you started talking with God. Nobody gets saved thinking about it. Nobody comes to Christ hearing somebody preach about it, sing about it, shout about it, testify about it. Somebody say they had to pray about it. If you're saved and truly been born again, you had to pray to get saved. You had to call on the name of Jesus. And look, Judas... Must have had it right at some point. Somebody say he knew the place, but he didn't know the person. Read it in John 18 and 2. That's why he betrayed Jesus. And there's a lot of people betraying him in the hour we live. Somebody say they're betraying him. And they know the place. They know where they need to be. They know what it takes. But somebody say somewhere along the way, just like the disciples, they've been around Jesus, but they're not taking time 
to fellowship with Jesus. My time with you. Something's always trying to take it away. Oh, don't let it slip away. And what would I do? Oh, Lord, what would I do? If I couldn't have my time. That's between us is what I'm allowed to be. Lord, I need your closeness so desperately. Yeah, I need your Holy Spirit. I time. Something's always trying to take it away. Oh, church, don't let it slip away. And what would I do? Lord, what would I do? What would I do? If I didn't have my time. And everybody look at somebody and say, don't let the enemy steal your steal. Too many times people are letting Satan steal their steal with God.